Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of the two bind keyword. So in a previous video, we introduced the two bind keyword, similar to the bind keyword, and then we work with a subset of particular macros, cycling link, sequence link, input and input box are examples we've seen so far. When we get input from users, we can bind that input to a particular variable. And then whenever we need that value, we can just refer to that variable. The two bind keyword complicates that in a very slight but interesting way in that we bind twice. So as we saw in a previous video, if we use the two bind keyword and we establish the value of a variable previously, when we work with things like input and input box, we can override the default value with the current value of that variable. We bind twice, the value and the macro itself. So let's look at some interesting way to create bound interactions. So as I mentioned in the previous video, that when we work with the two bind keyword, we bind across all macros also using that variable, that exact named variable and the two bind keyword. And again, we're limited to a subset of particular macros that use this. So let's create something a little bit strange. I'm using two bind as part of input and two bind as part of cycling link. So when we input things within this right here, this use of the input macro, if they match exactly what's in the cycling link, then the cycling link, the current value, will also change to that. They are bound together. There are interactions that are bound. And again, there's a limited subset in which this can work, but it creates some really interesting effects when it does. So let's jump into example one to really see this in action, and then I'll return back to the code. So notice this says low. And this says low right here, but if I type high, it matches high. They're bound together. The two bind keyword binds twice. And because it's bound to the value, that as long as the as long as there is a value within the cycling link that matches the value I also type in the input macro, it will be replicated. Medium is a possible value. Low is a possible value. And this creates some really interesting real-time interactions between macros, or at least in this subset of macros, in Harlow. We can create some really interesting things that, as we type, things will appear in another place or be connected to things in another place. Potentially, then, we could have somebody input the correct password, and as long as they did, it would also reappear as part of a cycling link or sequence link or other things we might want to use. We can also get a little strange by connecting a bunch of inputs together. So let's look at a very different example, but the exact same idea in practice. So this binds the to mind keyword across all uses of it. So I've created a kind of interesting but silly example. So I have two different here uses of the input macro, all one using to bind to a temporary variable named first name, and the second using to bind to a temporary variable named last name. And then I've bounded it again over on current name. Now the difference between this and this is the use of columns within Harlow. And again, it's a quick review of how we create columns and do alignment and do a lot of other things within Harlow. So we use equal signs. That's defining how big something is. And when we're creating a column, we use the bar symbol. That's the start of a column. So this is starting on the far left, the bar is all the way over on the left hand side, and this is starting on the far right, the bar is all the way over on the right hand side, and we're using two spaces. So this will be set up as one column, all of this stuff, and this will be set up as another column with equal spacing. Or in other words, I will have one column and then right next to it the next column of stuff. So let's go ahead and change the start of the story to example two. So if we play this, Anything we type over here will be mirrored over here, and anything we type down here will be mirrored over here. Because these are bound together. Both things, the column on one side and the left, and the column on the right, are both using the two byte keyword and using the exact same name of the variable. Now again, there's some limited usage here within Harlow. There's a limited number of macros that have that, but the ones that do can create some really interesting real-time effects because the variable or the use of the keyword that is, is binding the variable twice, not only to its value, but to the macro. So anything that changes here, changes here, and changes here, changes here. Now again, notice that we're doing it only in the use of the keyword and its single variable. 
So in cases where we might want something to update in real time, as we type it updates text or something else, we're going to need to use a slightly different set of macros to do that. But this gets us part of the way there and also shows us that there are situations where we may want one macro that we're getting input from to respond to another macro. In those use cases, the to bind keyword is incredibly useful because we can create bound interactions. They can bind to each other. As we saw in example one, we can bind input to cycling link, sequence link to cycling link, input to input box, and things like that. Again, there's a subset of macros that have this ability, those that use bind. If you're looking at the Harlow documentation, we can also, we can often use two bind in the same place. Now, it doesn't reply to all of those macros, but most of them that we've seen, and especially cycling link, sequence link, input, and input box. So, creating bound interactions within Harlow 3.3 can be really useful in some use cases, some really exciting interactions. Again, kind of limited in, in how it's presented within Harlow 3.3, but useful for a number of particular situations. We may want to create bound interactions using the to bind keyword in the exact same name of the variable. So binding twice, the value of the variable, and the different macros, and potentially multiple macros, as long as they're using that combination within a single passage within Harlow 3.3. Interesting concept, some really interesting use cases, but again, limited in particular macros that we use. Thanks for watching.